Alrighty folks, welcome to installment number two of setting up Creo for manufacturing. Uh, I've got my new mic set up. Hopefully this works well. If you guys have suggestions about better things I can do to improve sound quality, let me know. But I hope this will at least take care of the fading in and out. Maybe not necessarily the fuzziness of my voice, which might just be a me thing. Who knows? So... We're going to start this Creo tutorial, of course, in the File Explorer or Folder Browser, whatever you want to call it. You need to set up some folders, and this is going to be where we're going to put some stuff by using our configuration file. So I have one for work cells, one for my posts, and that's most of what's important. These other two folders I have are not critical to what we'll be setting up today. So now that we're in Creo, I'll show you what those are. So we're going to do new manufacturing assembly. OK. All right. So what exactly is the work cell that you saw in that one folder? Well, that is going to be telling Creo what machine I'm using. That'll tell it whether I'm going to use a wire EDM, a lathe, or a mill. So if I come over here to work center, drop that down, and I can grab a generic mill, and it'll say this is a mill and I can change buttons and whatnot. And a lot of this stuff is actually not necessary. The one things I would be careful for is make sure this post processor blank says either UNC X01 for your, lit, for your mills and for your wire EDMs, or UNC L01 for a lathe. And that is referencing the post processors that Creo uses to translate your tool paths from Creo language into the G code that your machine runs. Uh, and you want to set the ID to whatever post processor you're going to use. We'll be covering the different post processors in the third installment, hopefully. This is just to get you an introduction to the work center idea. So you can do a lot of this stuff. And Depending on your Creo license, I don't know, you might have to have a different license extension to even do 5-axis. But, instead of having to set that up every time, usually what I will do, oops, is go to User Defined Work Center. Anyway, this directory is this work cells directory. You can see I have my Fidal the lathe, and the wire EDM that I used up at school. And those are those right here. So if I open one of these, say I want to use the lathe, I open it, and then if I grab my machine from the model tree, add a definition, there it is. Notice the UNC L01 and the post processor ID. So there is my work cell. Now in addition to that, if I go to make an operation, which you need to do to set up any Creo NC sequence, grab a coordinate system real quick. Okay. Now I can get to my cutting tools. And the lathe work cell brings with it certain cutting tools. If I come over here and I open up, say, the Fidal, which is a milling machine, if I open that with a text editor, that's notepad. I can see there's a lot of gobbledygook. And right here, amongst the gobbledygook, there is some meaningful stuff. This one quarter inch spot drill, that's part of my tool table. So obviously this is a very inconvenient place to edit your tools, but you can see that the tools that you'd want to use with your machine, once you create those, you can save them to the work center and then you can have them with you every time you open up the work center. And the way you do that is you make all the tools you want and save them, and okay, click okay, and then go to your work center, select it, drop down the work center menu, and save work center. And you can see down here, my work center has been stored. And that will save whatever tools you have to your mill, to your lathe, whatever. And then you don't have to make over your face mill that stays in the machine all the time. You don't have to remake the tool every time you use the machine. So that covers our work cell and also the tool library. Now, there's another folder down here, which is the G posts. 
you'll want to set this one because this includes all of the post processors that will change your toolpaths and creo into G code. And the way you do that, you go to File, Options, and our lovely friend, the Configuration Editor, which you guys saw in the last video. And so that option is the G Post processor, G Post underscore dir. And so you can just browse to wherever you want to put them and make that folder there. And also, for your work cells, you will want to use, there we go, the Pro Manufacturing Work Cell Directory. And that will set it to where you want to go. And also, for other things, your Pro Manufacturing Parameters Directory also goes with the work cells. So if I open my folder browser back to where the work cells were, you can see there are these little per files. And what that is, is when I go to machine tool setup here in the ribbon, I can load a print file. I'll retrieve. So this is actually the one for the Fadal. We'll not ignore the fact that I'm technically working on a lathe project for now, but this is for the Fadal. If I go to modify that print table, there are certain things on this, in this case they're all no's, that when I post a program, the program will take certain information and put that in there as comments. So I can put things like, let's see, I can put the part name, part number, the tool number, so you can see my tool table, the operation name, so I know whether the face milling or the hole drilling is coming up in the sequence, and certain things like that that just help your program to be readable, because you can open the program in a text editor and see all these things printed. Alrighty, so what you can do is you can change these to yes or no as you please. Click OK, and then you can save that. Give it a name. And then you can bring that up every time you go to make a new program, and you can load in those parameters such that they get printed out with your program automatically. All right. And looking at our G posts, you can see that all of the posts are named UNC X01, or a couple of them are UNC L01. And that's because the way that Austin and C designates a different post is not by a different file name, but by a different number after the file. So you can see this one is .f97. Some of these are .f39, .f38, etc. And so that, that post processor number we saw when we edit our machine, that ID number corresponds to the number that we're going to be using here, this x01.f59.f97, etc. So in the next video, we will work on the structure of setting up a G post for your particular machine. And that should fairly well round out our discussion of how to set up Creo. And then hopefully I can squeeze in one more video, sort of like the YRDM, showing you a wrap up of how that all works together to make your manufacturing workspace flow from your solid model to your tool pads to a posted program that you can take to the machine. Thank you guys for this watching this short video. If you have any suggestions for future videos or comments about how I can improve my video making process, let me know in the comments below. Thanks, and see you guys around.